Raz, dwa, trzy. Szanowni Państwo, witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie w Ministerstwie Klimatu i Środowiska na So we would like to welcome you at the press conference of Minister Moskva and Fatih Biro. This is the managing director of IEA and uh, Ma Madam Minister uh, Anna Moskva will take the floor first. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to welcome in our ministry uh, Mr. Director, and I would like to thank you for your arrival. Of course, Mr. Director is visiting the countries, and it's a big honor for us, uh, especially these days when the energy issues are the most important issues that we are talking about. Uh, so the uh, International Ener Energy Agency, very important entity for Poland and also for all the member states as uh, for the energy policy for Poland. Uh, it is also a very important entity represented by Mr. Director because for a long time Mr. Director was saying the same as we are saying in terms of diversification, necessity of being independent from Russia about the dominant position of Gazprom. So he was saying very bravely on the international arena. It was not uh, that much highlighted that uh, this is not uh, is a threat and also triggers certain other risks and uh, threats uh, for Europe. Uh, and we will thank you for this support and this consistency in, in, in view and also articulating the standpoint and for this support that we received from the agency. We would like to thank uh, from here. Uh, we would like to ask for more because Poland is still the member of the agency. Today we also meet each other uh, on the day of uh, publishing the report because the agency is analyzing the uh, energy policy of the countries, makes the evaluation of the policy and prepares the objective report assessing good uh, decisions, also investment dimension, but also risks and threats, something that should be improved. Uh, in each of the member states. And such a report was also published regarding Poland. We analyzed this report. It was also prepared in the dialogue with Poland. So thank you very much also for this dialogue. The preparation of the report is a very important task because we can see our own policy, compare it with other European policies. And that task was performed by the agency. We thank you very much for this report. Today we talk, we've talked about Mr. Director that despite the fact that this report was prepared prior to the war, but when we look at the report is still updated, which shows that our energy policy was planned very well, uh, way, long way ahead, and also underlined uh, the diversification, sovereignty, and independence. And today we know that this is the pri these are the priorities today. And what happened uh, uh, recently also in Poland, uh, we are revising our energy policy, not because we have war, but also because this energy policy in Poland is developing very dynamically, especially the renewables. And we can see the need to increase the number of renewable sources. And today in Poland, this is around 18 gigawatts. And we are uh, declaring each time uh, these uh, volumes because these uh, volumes are increasing because the call goal of 2020, 15% of the renewables was achieved, the, the goal set by the European Commission. So we would like uh, to focus on the renewables and in the same time, uh, in the background, uh, these uh, stable sources, this is uh, coal and gas, and in the future also ATOM, and uh, the 2033 will be the year of the first production of ATOM, and uh, also all these recommendations are included in the report, so this is good news for Mr. Director that in this revision of the energy policy that is happening in Poland, uh, all these conclusions will be taken into account. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Minister. So now we will we will uh, talk. Uh, Madam Minister, uh, dear colleagues, uh, very good afternoon to all of you. It's a great pleasure, Madam Minister, uh, to be back to uh, Warsaw and to meet uh, my uh, Polish, uh, Polish friends and yourself. Thank you very much for your time, Madam Minister. Dear colleagues, International Energy Agency, uh, <coughs> several member governments, 
and one of our jobs is every five years, we analyze the energy policies of the governments, oil, gas, electricity, efficiency, investment, energy law, with the independent several experts from different countries and make a critic, make recommendations to governments every five years. And it is the reason, in fact, uh, this meeting was planned to share uh, this uh, report with uh, Madam Minister and also with the other Polish uh, colleagues. I will tell you at the end of my uh, remarks a few recommendations we have for uh, the uh, Polish government to implement to better their energy policies. But before that, I would like to say a few things where we are today in terms of the uh, global and European energy markets and what are the uh, uh, challenges. To start with, I would like to comment and thank Polish government from the day one for their determined, nimble and very strong response to the invasion of Russia of Ukraine. Uh, my thank you uh, uh, to you, um, uh, Madam uh, Minister, and to your government and to your people, uh, I should say. Uh, I travel many uh, uh, countries, talk with many governments on the phone, and uh, I can tell you that the, uh, the admiration for the Polish people, Polish government, in the middle of this humanitarian crisis is immense. You may not know it, you are here, but uh, I can assure you, whomever I talk internationally, there is a great admiration for uh, your people opening their homes, opening their hearts, and supporting the Ukrainian uh, uh, people. Now, uh, Madam Minister, uh, you mentioned one point at the International Energy Agency. Since years, we were warning about this is about to come. And I prepare, I have only one slide. Normally I have many, many slides to show, but today I am going to stop with one slide to show you where, uh, where we are. So this is a, the, I think if I am not wrong, this is in the fi Financial Times in, in Davos uh, last uh, year. We are talking about the gas crisis before anything uh, happened. 2004, the IEA chief economist, I don't, I don't remember who he was, but he said at that time, <laughs> the, 20 years ago, the EU's over-dependence on Russia gas supply is a big risk. It was 20 years ago, in 2004. And then 2016, when we make a, a G7 uh, countries, all these governments, asked the IEA to make a report on uh, natural gas in general, and we say that the Europe's over-dependency on Russia need to be addressed, and we gave some concrete suggestions uh, to Europeans to diverse from uh, Russian gas. 2020, as we make the in-depth review and analysis of uh, 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 today, uh, Poland, we make an analysis of the European, European energy uh, policies in general, and our, perhaps the most important recommendation uh, was, Europe's Southeast remains dependent on Russian gas and cannot access 40% of EU LNG capacity, highlighting it, in my view, one of the nerve centers of gas security. And September uh, last year, we said very clearly, uh, and it was, it was the headline of Financial Times, IEA says Russia is intentionally limiting gas supplies to Europe. It cannot be more clear than this. It's this September, uh, and the, what happened in February, I think uh, uh, five, six months ago. So we have seen what is happening. Why we are doing, we are not uh, anti this government, anti that government. We look at the data. We look at energy security, we look at climate change. And when we look at this, it was uh, uh, not to see these developments uh, wouldn't be uh, possible, so we saw them and we brought it uh, with that. Uh, 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 Madam Minister, one of my motto is, no fear, no favor. 
So we said it what, we, what it was, and it is today uh, where we are. Now, going back to the, uh, again, uh, Poland. Now, when we look at the many countries uh, today, in the middle of the first global energy crisis, there are very few countries, if any, who was as prepared as Poland. And again, my congratulations for the uh, Polish uh, government uh, to be so well uh, prepared. It goes from the expansion of the uh, Poland's LNG terminal, which was uh, completed last uh, April, to a pipeline with Lithuania's LNG terminal, started to operate in uh, May, and also uh, very much looking forward to Baltic pipe uh, bringing gas from Norway starting from uh, October with full operation, uh, hopefully, at the end of uh, this uh, year. When we look at the numbers, the gas storage numbers uh, uh, in Europe, I think the, uh, your uh, numbers, well over 80% is exemplary uh, to uh, many. So it is uh, definitely an extremely, extremely well prepared uh, uh, country. Now, a bit global, dear <coughs> colleagues, our numbers show that today, as I tried to mention, the world is in the first global energy crisis. In the 70s, some of you may uh, remember, we had the oil crisis, uh, two, uh, two oil crises. But at that time, they were only oil. And today, it is oil, gas, coal, uh, uranium, uh, among others. And uh, Russia was the number one oil exporter of the world, number one natural gas exporter of the world, a major player in the global coal uh, markets, and the loss of uh, Russian supply for different reasons meant a first global energy crisis and very high prices we are facing today. And as International Energy Agency, we made a couple of things. Uh, one of them is uh, that the, uh, to be a member of the IEA, uh, like uh, uh, Poland, every country has certain amount of oil stocks under the ground. And we are almost 50 years old. Uh, up to this uh, year, we released three times oil stocks brought to the markets to comfort the markets. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the war in Middle East, Libya, uh, the Katrina, uh, the, uh, the Hurricane Katrina, and two times now to comfort the markets. And the amount of oil we put on the market was substantial, the largest ever. And I would like to thank here again, uh, Madam Minister, being uh, one of the drivers among our member countries to support the IES Secretariat to bring this oil uh, to the markets, which helped the price increase to be even higher than we have today. But nobody should be mistaken. The amount of large amount of oil we put in the market is only, only 9% of what we have. If there is a need in the future, if our governments decide so, we will be again coming to the market and trying to address supply uh, disruptions there. We have done this, and we have also made two 10-point plans for oil and for natural gas. What can we do in order to reduce the risks for oil and gas crisis and prices and the help the uh, security here. I understand that we have now all of them, uh, both of them in uh, Polish uh, language, thanks to my colleague Miloš Karpinski. And uh, you may uh, look at it because we believe uh, this summer for oil markets may be challenging. 
as the oil demand goes up into summer as a result of driving season starting. And this uh, winter for natural gas may be challenging as it is the heating season uh, starting. So we came up with uh, those uh, suggestions. And uh, all of these issues have been discussed at our ministerial meeting uh, in March, last March, only two months ago. And we were uh, happy to have all of our ministers, including the Ukrainian uh, minister uh, and several uh, business leaders uh, with us. And I would like to uh, thank uh, Madam Minister to you for your very active, very dynamic and constructive uh, contributions to the debate, which was chaired by the U.S. Secretary of Energy, Mrs. Uh, Granholm. So, uh, dear colleagues, energy security is a major top priority for many countries uh, now, and it should be so. But we at the IEA also believe that the climate change is still a major issue. Clean energy transitions is something that we should not forget and we should continue to push. And many of the clean energy options, renewables, energy efficiency, nuclear power, they are also helping to improve our energy uh, security. And uh, here, uh, uh, perhaps uh, I would like to finish by couple of findings of our uh, report and the in-depth review of the uh, Polish energy policies. So we are uh, uh, commending in our report uh, the uh, successful increase of uh, uh, PV installations record in uh, Europe, especially uh, in the residential uh, sector. We are uh, also commanding the ambitious plans for uh, offshore wind, which will also have the job uh, creation. And also, uh, we are uh, commanding the, uh, the steps that Poland is taking in terms of making nuclear power part of the energy mix. Of course, it's very important here, the government's determination, but. Uh, to choose the right partner, right technology, and the right economic uh, uh, framework. The, we have uh, several recommendations for uh, the government. Uh, one of them uh, is that the, the acceleration of the expansion of the electricity systems, the increasing share of uh, renewables and planned nuclear generation would mean we have to see a strong increase in the transmission lines. And I know that Madam Minister told me it is one of uh, her uh, top uh, priorities, uh, because these transmission lines will enable the country uh, to bring the uh, electricity from north of the country to the demand uh, centers. Uh, we also think uh, that the uh, clean air program the focus on this and the renovation uh, of the buildings uh, with the uh, thermal insulation with upgrades uh, to the lowest emission heating uh, uh, systems. And we also uh, believe that the, there is a, a focus, and this is a very good focus, and the uh, heat pumps and the insulation, which will both of them together will help both energy security, reaching our energy security, and also uh, climate course. Looking at the future, uh, Poland needs to develop long-term energy strategies and pathways that are compatible with the EU uh, climate uh, goals. But uh, all in all, uh, 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 Madam Minister, may I uh, um, express the thanks of the uh, IES Secretariat to you and to your government. In the last uh, several years, the steps you have taken to make the, your energy uh, system very secure, and the steps you are taking in the direction of the clean uh, energy, but uh, more importantly, uh, playing a leading role in pushing the Russia's aggression uh, back in the energy sector. So thank you very much for your attention. Dziękuję, Pani Dyrektor. Przechodzimy do pytań. Prosi o kwestię.
thank you very much. Uh, so now the questions. So could you please introduce yourself and uh, Polish press agency? I have two questions to the to Mr. Director, referring to what you have said that in summer there might be some problems with oil and in winter with gas. So in accordance with the agency, it means the gas and the oil that they might might be in ra rations, that there might be this shortage of these raw materials on the market. And also I would like to ask about your comments regarding the recent uh, package of sanctions of the European Commission and also the objection from Hungary regarding... Uh, we have to look at the consumption side, demand side, and we have to find ways to reduce the demand voluntarily. Our 10-point plans is uh, looking into this. Uh, for example, we are suggesting, in terms of oil, reducing the speed limits in the highways, uh, maybe uh, making the public transportation very cheap or uh, for free to incentivize people to use that. In terms of natural gas, uh, the, uh, bring the thermostat uh, one or two degrees lower to save uh, uh, gas. Uh, again, insulation. Uh, these measures can be taken by citizens, by governments, by the cities, and this could help to lower the demand. But despite that, I cannot, when I look at the numbers, in some countries, I cannot exclude the risk of uh, rationing, uh, especially for natural gas, if we are not able to take the necessary measures between now and uh, winter. This is uh, one issue. The second uh, 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 the question, the, uh, the EU's uh, uh, recent uh, proposal of, for the uh, Im import ban from uh, Russia, I think it is something uh, that it is uh, well-timed, and I hope the implementation will be done in a, a manner that the EU countries will uh, carry, it, uh, carry it forward in a united way, and it reaches the, uh, the aim, which is uh, to uh, punish the aggressor. And I, I hope that all the EU countries are part of uh, that uh, aim, and I hope that they are all together uh, support to reach uh, that goal. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, question, Gazeta Pravna. I have uh, two questions to Madam Minister in the context of the recommendations that the agency presented. Uh, first of all, so when we can expect uh, the next steps uh, as for the updating of the energy policy of Poland and whether this updating will be included will be under the normal social consultations procedure or will be uh, accelerated procedure. The second question uh, is when we can expect uh, the next steps from the government in terms of the uh, receiving of the drafts uh, in the legal uh, act, uh, which is key for increasing the share of the renewables in our energy mix. Uh, uh, thank you very much. These two questions, of course, are interrelated. And as for the updating, of course, it will be in the normal procedure of consultations, openness, and uh, full transparency of this process. Uh, and uh, to a certain extent, the work uh, on this document uh, has started, uh, and also in the process of preparing the legal act that you have mentioned, because when preparing the process of liberalization and making this legal act more flexible, two weeks ago we took over that legal act from Minister Buda, and now we are reviewing uh, the consultations that were closed uh, by the previous uh, minister, and when we consider all those comments, then we'll pass the document to the standing committee, and then the Council of Ministers, and same, so our ambition 
says that it, that this will happen in the coming months uh, uh, at the new recessions of the same that are uh, planned uh, and we will keep the main path and uh, the main tendency it means 500 meters plus uh, what is indicated in illegal like the bigger involvement of the local community in the process of taking the decision on the distance uh, and in the same time in the ministry of infrastructure we started the process of revision revis of the uh, sea, uh, uh, sea offshore wind energy, so to increase the, its potential. So the sites that actually were developed by the investors plus 11 new sites that are uh, in the pipeline, so uh, this gives us a lot of ambition. So that we would like to also increase the volumes. Uh, so the process of uh, revising that is prepared by the ministry is possible for the sea economy is doing this. So there are two processes which are getting us closer to the uh, revising uh, have already been completed. And uh, so it will be in a moment that we'll move it uh, to, we'll translate it into the proposals on the document and we'll start the consultations. Uh, Radio Talk FM, I have a question to Mr. Director because in the report we can also read that Poland is still dependent uh, on coal. And the question is, uh, what recommendations here, what threats are here uh, flowing from such 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 mix dominated by coal in Poland. So each country has to find it is way uh, how to find a trade-off between its energies. Polish government uh, already made clear uh, that they would uh, like to reduce the emissions significantly in order to uh, reach uh, to be in line with the international climate goals. And uh, I know that there is still coal. But uh, when the energy security uh, concerns, uh, the current energy security concerns are not with us because we have immediate energy security concerns, we are in the war time, I believe that the government uh, will uh, continue to address this uh, issue to uh, uh, further clean up the energy sector. When I look at the next steps that the uh, uh, Madam Minister shared with me, it is the uh, renewables, it is the energy efficiency, it is the nuclear power, it is the hydrogen. These are the, uh, the topics that uh, uh, Madam Minister and the government has in mind. So therefore, I don't expect a major growth of uh, coal in Poland in the next years uh, to come. Thank you. Next question. Uh, the next question. Uh, uh, so, uh, mam pytanie. Um, do, do, if sanctions, if you sanctions on oil take effect, uh, how much you think uh, Russian oil exports, oil and fuel exports, will drop, and uh, by when? And uh, do you think that other nations will be able to compensate, and to what extent, if not wholly? The, the, the lack of oil from Russia. Question to Madam Minister is I would like to ask about the cooperation of the Germany regarding the import of oil from the German refineries. So at what stage we are and how, what are the needs of the Germany and how much we can help? And what is this cooperation all about whether we receive something in return from Germany? Uh, some uh, other, uh, some, in some other areas, or uh, we can cooperate also during uh, just mutual purchases of, of oil. Uh, so, what is this cooperation all about, Madam Minister? Uh, completely right. Uh, the uh, Russia uh, imports not going to Europe may well go uh, somewhere else. In fact, they do go somewhere else, especially some uh, key consuming centers in Asia. Uh, but I would like to make uh, three points there. First of all, the demand will be less for uh, Russian uh, oil. And as a result, in uh, our oil market report we just published uh, today, we expected the Russian production as of uh, today is 1 million barrels per day, less than uh, before the invasion. And more importantly, uh, it will be about 3 million barrels per day, at least 3 million barrels per day 
in the second half of the year before the invasion. Big decline there. But Russia can, even this uh, oil, Russia can uh, uh, export to other countries. One shouldn't forget that the bringing Russian oil to Europe uh, uh, is about four days, four or five days. But bringing to Asia, you need about 50, 55 days. And this uh, transportation is made by ships. Most of them are owned by the European companies. And they need to be in insured and almost all the insurance companies are European uh, companies. So in the future, uh, one shouldn't exclude that the uh, European uh, governments also take some steps in this uh, direction. I think we should uh, take this also uh, into uh, account. Referring to the question about Polish-German cooperation as for well support and diversification and being independent from Russia, so as of today in Gdańsk, for Loina, uh, the managing uh, the managing management model, cooperation with those refineries, so this is the optimum of the Polish society, German society, and we have to take into account also the potential support of Ukraine, which is still on, and maybe after after the war, we can also, uh, including the, our Ukrainian partner in this model, maybe it will be necessary. So we have everyday work on that, both on the Polish and German level, on technical level, on the level, uh, corporate level, and also on the level of our ministry. So we will probably travel to Berlin soon. Uh, just to summarize, you know, the technical works that have been done, one simple condition to in order to implement any solution on our side. Uh, uh, so this is the withdrawal of the Russian uh, share in Fed refinery, and without this, uh, uh, no model, business, no business model will be will be will be uh, necessary. Uh, Mr. Birol, one question to you. I just m want to make sure I understood you correctly. Did you say that Russian oil production? Uh, you expect Russian oil production to decline by three million barrels per day in the second half of the year? Did I understand right? <coughs> at least three million barrels per day in the second half of this year compared to before the invasion. Thank you so much. Next question. TV, TVP Info. Minister, 2023, you said that uh, this was the first uh, year of the work on the nuclear energy in Poland. What is the status of the work? because we know that the first reactor is to be in place uh, before 2029. And a report, an environmental impact uh, assessment report has been uh, submitted recently to the general, uh, general uh, environment. So this means that uh, this uh, investment process is uh, ready for approval. It is a very important year this year because uh, this was when we have to choose technology. And this, this there will be the key decision that will enable us to continue design process and to propose specific solutions. That is, in 2026, uh, we can build, start designing in order to make sure that in 2033 we'll be have the first reactor in place. Let's imagine it's 2033, and we have uh, committed, we have uh, set in operation the first uh, reactor. So we need the professionals, uh, human resources, the energy market in Poland will change completely. So, for now, what we need is um, just some uh, foreign. A training abroad of our specialists, also in the uh, within the OECD format, there's the atomic uh, international atomic energy agency. So this has to be involved too in order to actively prepare our workers uh, for this uh, project. And in our ministry, we're preparing recommendations for this large nuclear power plants and also for the small modular reactors. And we hope that at the end of this decade, we hope to see placed on the world market. And starting in 2030s, they will be uh, they will be in 
place on the market. And another question for the minister. Madam Minister, can you comment? There is new information coming from Russia which specified that the sanctions of yesterday will simply mean that gas cannot be transmitted through Poland because uh, it will that some uh, companies are subject to sanctions so can we continue to use the reverse flow in order to supply Poland in order to to uh, then to is uh, ensuring our meeting does a does a conference of of uh, Chancellor Habeck and we will listen to the conference of the German minister when we finish this. Perhaps you know more than we do as regards uh, the media information. Yes, last uh, night uh, sanctions includes both Gazprom and the German companies cooperating with Gazprom, which means some restrictions for Germany. And we need to recall that the gas that we get through the connection with Germany is all not only Russian uh, gas, but also the gas from the market, not just the Russian molecules. And without this connector with Germany, we are ready in our, in our proposals. We have 50% of gas stored, and also we have LNG taken care of, and we'll, in the autumn we'll be starting the, uh, the Baltic pipe. So we are ready. So thank you very much. We finished with the conference. Thank you.